Okay, friends, you more or less understand the whole show. Now I'm going to explain a bit more to make you understand what else is happening in this environment. What is the Nini going to do? Declared not guilty at Thursday's hearing in New York before Judge Catherine Polk Faia. He showed up in his khaki uniform and wearing orange Crocs, cuffed at his feet, waist, and hands. The prosecution said there was plenty of evidence against Nini, and that they would be revealing it little by little as the process advanced. Nini's hearing was attended by his family, it seems. He was represented by the lawyer, Andrew Patil. I'm shocked because the mighty boss of Nini was crying in court. I can't believe it. If he's the most powerful, the bravest, the baddest, the one who mocked everyone, the one who was going to run off the Maido Flaco from Salado, and the one who was going to take on El Russo. And Dutch. And what else did he say that made the Omega cry? Boasting that his enemies were crying. I don't remember who it was who said he made someone cry. How can it be possible that this young man who neither asked questions nor left anyone alive is a crybaby? You see, it's not the same to kill while tied up. That doesn't mean bravery, nor does swearing a lot on the radio show courage. Learn to be men. And I'm not saying don't cry. I tell them to learn to be men in the sense that they respect. Because this trash also has a family. He and his whole gang love to mess with the family of innocence, but okay, we'll be here, watching to see how this case evolves. I read in an article that it was possible that the Nini would seek an agreement with the authorities to cooperate in the trial against Ovidio, which is impossible. As I said, Ovidio is already cooperating. Waiting and then you will check and confirm it. And also, please don't start making up stuff in your head. Please. The knowest eh? that El Nini is going to court for not cooperating. No, gentlemen, the system works like this. Usually, at the first hearing and the second and third, the defendant normally pleads not guilty. And it's not because he intend to go to trial, but during that time. It is when the defense lawyer and their client are negotiating with the prosecution, and is just like a mere procedure, a mere formality. The fact that the defendant says he is not guilty, and I will tell you how it is. In fact, many times, even if they go to court and plead not guilty, they are already cooperating with the prosecution, but they just haven't signed the plea agreement. When this is signed is when it all becomes official. But for more practical purposes, cooperation is already happening unofficially. And that's how it can last months or years and be cooperating. And to the public eye, the accused is not cooperating. Because he has not pleaded guilty. Because in court, he has not pleaded guilty. But behind the scenes, the accused has been cooperating for a long time. Just like Ovidio is making it look right now that he's going to court. Because that's how the system works. There has to be a cutoff date to see how the case is going. And what do both sides say? Because they are asking the prosecutor and the defense attorney for more time. But it's just so that... The rest of the people, that is, the general public won't know that Ovidio or any accused person is cooperating. And so they give him more opportunity to either bring in more people or to gather more information. Because if the news broke that Ovidio pleaded guilty, then people would get scared and turn away. Because they are going to say, it's going to set me up or something like that. That's how it is. It's simply a strategy. That's what we can call it, a strategy. So, with Nini, you'll see. He will go back to court and will still plead not guilty. Why? Because as I told you, it's a strategy and it's a procedure. And the lawyers come out saying, My client does not plan to cooperate with the government, does not intend to talk about his brothers or his bosses. And I tell you this because I saw it last year in a case in Chicago. What was that about? It was all lies from those deceitful lawyers. 
In my opinion, Nini will definitely cooperate. Most people don't know him, but I do have very close friends to his family, and that they were also very close to him and have known him for many years. The Nini, as I already told you and had told you, he is a human being just like you and like me. Of course, riding in an armored vehicle with 300 people protecting him, he'll feel very brave and claim he's the best, that he's faithful and loyal. But look at the photos they posted of him. That man does not look terrifying, not at all. But it's like that. As they say, in a group, everyone is brave. You can't be foolish. He knows he was set up, but he may be naive, but not stupid. He has to say he's wearing his shirt right from the start and that he's loyal and all about JGL, because if he doesn't say that, what's going to happen? What if things escalate? They'll target his family. He knows what his former bosses are like. He already did it on their orders. Of course, he knows they will do the same to him because that's their way of acting. And I'm not talking about the animal's daughter or his children. Maybe Mr. Manuel can do a favor there. No, I'm talking about Nini's mom, his other family. Because you know, the Sayur Sainan. That he had another woman before marrying the animal's daughter and has children with her. Nini knows perfectly well that they will leave him with nothing. And he knows nobody liked him. He knows everyone hates him. He said it years ago. He knew nobody wanted him, but he didn't give a damn. And that the day his bosses were gone, he would make a move because he knew the Mayos wanted to screw him over. Like I told you, here we're not going to play dumb and we speak the truth. Do you think he can handle life locked up? Look how he was crying in Mexico. And that's what the corrido he composed himself said, that he was normal and then suddenly felt depressed, experiencing nights of terror. Listen, it hadn't even been six months. That's abuse. It's a shame. But no, he was really badass and mocked everyone. He was the tough guy among tough guys. Look at this clown writing corridos, telling people. Rather just end it fighting. Don't let them catch you. Please do. Only says it because he have a mouth. He should have done it himself. Because he would do as he pleased. Mocking the government. Making fun of the Marines. National Guard. Army. FBI. DEA. Laughing at everyone. But what did this clown do? Where did he go to fight? If he never left Culiacan, the farthest he went was to Mazatlan. And that was just for a stroll. He never went to fight in other states. And it's not the same, believe me, fighting in your own home and going to fight in another state, which is controlled by other cartels. They really take risks. But this kid, who's crying because they just caught him, and I want to clarify, that's not wrong. Because we men also cry the detail here. He was just as he said, claiming he was the toughest and boasted about not bending for anything or anyone. That's why it's better not to be a gossip. Moreover, here I'm going to show you a conversation from Nini that I had already showed you. Last time in the Nini episode, where Nini is the one who appears in gray. As you see it, what this man says, catch the guilty bunch of dicks. He says he says that about the fucking child killer, innocent killer. And he tells the DEA guys to come over to catch, torture, and kill them. Like they did Kiki Camarena. Camarena, he emphasizes it. I didn't kill Camarena. But let the DEA go so they end up just like Camarena. Tortured and killed on a dirt road. Well, the truth is, I don't think he had the guts to say that to the agents now that he's got them on one side. And to top it off... He hates the damn snitches. Let's see if from so much hate love springs because you see what they say. That from love to hate, there's only one step. We will know very soon here. Well, I'm going to tell you. Because now I say it, he won't go to trial. I can almost sign that anywhere you want. I already mentioned it. 
When they read him his Miranda rights, they told him that anything he says can be used against him. And what did this fool do? Just to look good. Because that's where it shows that he's not smart at all. Started bragging that he was the one in charge of everything. And that everything he has is because of the Chapitos. And I don't know what else. Well, that's a confession. However you look at it. Because if he says he was in charge of everything, and that he was at the forefront of the Culiacan operation, and that everything he owns is thanks to, to the Chapitos. He said that he owed the Chapitos, claiming he caused a mess, and that his bosses are the Chapitos. So everything he did, he did for them there. He's already talking about himself, and he's fully incriminating himself already. Because believe me, they use all that. From there, you already have Nini's testimony confessing things and making an involuntary accusation against the Chapitos, who no longer accusations, really because they already have more than enough, but... All right, from Nini, they have thousands of photos, videos, conversations, audio recordings of Nini, because the social media guy loved to record everything and liked talking. He was very communicative. Well, all that's great for the American security agencies, because it's all evidence. Well, and who would be the witnesses to testify against Nini? If he decide to go to trial, the first on the list is his former boss, Ovidio Guzman, because he is the one who ordered him to do many things and knows all his misdeeds towards Nini. Another one, you know, the Minilik. That's another one who really knows stuff about him, and I supposed would be delighted to meet him face to face. Another one, also Mayito Gordo, because he knows a lot about Nini. Another on this list, Cholo Ivan, because he also had to know several things about Nini. And since he was a gunman just like him, but now, he's from the team that's cooperating with the government, even if they won't admit it. Also Humberto, one who was arrested in Sinaloa and was just extradited to Arizona a short while ago, accused of fentanyl as well and how to leave aside the American citizen who he kidnapped along with the child and those from Tamazula, but they did let her go. There are enough witnesses to sink him for life. But as I say, I can almost bet he will plead guilty and will cooperate with the prosecution. Since Nini, he knows he was betrayed, and like we all have noticed, he can't handle the pressure. As we previously discussed, when he has been crying, and also has Manuel Fernandez, the father-in-law, as an advisor, who has been sending messages saying it's not worth it to spend a lifetime locked up there in jail, sending weepy letters to the judge. As you may well remember, Manuel Fernandez testified in the Chicago court against his former collaborator Jesus Raul Beltran Leon, the Clover or Chuy Raul, who was sentenced to 28 years in prison? What's my prediction? I think they're going to collaborate. Why? Because as I told you, he knows he was betrayed. I also suppose that he requested his prompt extradition, which will later be known as, I tell you, it is only my opinion. He will reach a plea agreement and will confess absolutely everything even what is not asked of him. That is, what's going to happen. It means they will combine the charges from Colombia and New York. They will convert into one, which will be the first step. Then, he will be going to talk with the prosecutors several days a month. And there, they will treat him well and bring him food, whatever food he asks for, so he remembers everything and talks willingly. So he's happy because you know the saying, full belly, happy heart. And well, happy because he's going to talk about everything. Now let's talk about plea agreements. If a guilty plea is agreed upon, he and anyone else cannot lie. If they find out that he lied, the deal is automatically canceled. And they might add more charges for perjury. This means lying. That's why people don't lie there and don't take risks. And just imagine, Ovidio is also cooperating. And if Ovidio says one thing and Nini says another, well, 
There lies the problem. That means both will tell the truth, just as it is. Now, that's something else. Many people think they can cooperate and just talk about whoever they want. It doesn't work like that. Gentlemen, you are very mistaken. It's not usually like this, for example. For instance, if the government wants information on Luis, Juan, and Andres, and you only talk about Luis and Juan, not Andres, there the plea deal also breaks down. And this is for those who say, I'm telling you, for instance, that Ovidio will only talk about other people and not his brothers. Absolutely and definitely not like that. If the prosecution asks about his siblings, Ovidio has to say everything about his siblings. Otherwise, they won't respect the plea agreement and will give him life in prison. And the same goes for El Nini, in case his friends think he won't talk about them. Forget about that. He's going to talk a mile a minute, for instance about Marquitos, Piuyi, the 27th, Pii, he'll mention everyone, even Jaimiko, unless he wants to be JGL Rumi to make him proud, talking through the toilet. It's how prisoners communicate there in ADX. To tell the boss, well, here I am, because your children put me here. I'm sure that will fill Joaquin with pride, seeing his children have learned everything from him, and that, and they put it into practice. But I don't think that will happen. I think he's going to be in a witness protection program prison called WITSEC, where it will have some privileges like anyone who collaborates with the United States government. And yes, I think it will last several years, but he's young and has the chance to get out. Look at the reality. The thing is, drug trafficking is a never-ending cycle. Some go into jail and others come out. But in reality, everything remains the same, those who leave. They do it because they end up working with the government giving information about others to reduce their own sentences. Like that, those who are inside, they point to new targets, and those new targets end up in prison. But it doesn't stop there. Those coming in in turn make deals to rat out others, and the cycle continues. There's always someone coming in and someone going out. The chain never breaks because there's always someone ready to take someone else's place. In the end, it seems it doesn't matter. No matter how many are caught or collaborate, the system keeps turning, and the drug trade moves forward as if nothing can stop it. So now you know I think the S9 will indeed manage to be like his idol, the Chino Antrax. We'll continue following his footsteps, First, they did it on social media, and now they will do it by collaborating with the government. I'm telling you. This is because I read many comments saying the Chino did not cooperate, please. If you don't know, better not speak. Of course, he cooperated. That's why he got out and got less than 10 years. I mean, less than the minimum sentence. So the S9, I think, will take the same path. And do you remember when Nini was fighting with Ponchito over the radio? I'm going to play an audio that I think... It's aimed at the one with the initials tattooed on his leg. Listen to it. <laughs> I am sure. What the Nini is thinking right now is that he's going to bring his former boss through the woods at a run and make him stop on the United States. And you've heard, he'll be well disguised as Navy or National Guard when he's brought in from there in the operations. Well, I just have to say, musicians, start shaking in your boots. Be very cautious, because many will remember me. Musicians, politicians, cops, dancers, and very famous YouTubers will end up in the United States without needing a visa. And speaking of famous YouTubers who are really tangled up, I want to introduce someone who's joining me here. And first of all, I want to thank my friend from Phoenix who sent me this gift. It will be Okran Leak's new pet.
It's the tiger whose balls will be scratching, as he says. And if you don't like it, well, April and Mayo. Because if not, I will send the 53,000 trucks I have, so get ready. I was thinking of naming it Cameline or Camialucine, but the final say is with my dear audience. And I want you to put the names in the comments so that the most voted and the most eye-catching one, that's what the Okran mascot will be called. Because you know we help everyone out by giving them advertising as he likes. He also gives us publicity. We also want him to be known. So it will be joining us from now on. <laughs> Well, you've seen it, folks, as the other guy would say. So don't get tangled up because the 53 trucks will fall on you. From Little Camille. I hope you like this episode. I did it very hastily because of the extradition thing, and I had nothing planned about it. I was going to introduce another episode, but well, here I've done what I could. So you can know a bit more about how this process works. If you have any questions or things you'd like to know, leave them in the comments. To keep introducing episodes to inform you too. I say goodbye with a hug for all of you. Hopefully, everything has been made clear to you. And also that you had a little laugh because that's what life is about. Having fun, chilling out, and smiling. And take good care. See you in the next episode. You know, the one and only true narrative of the Okran world. You'll only find it here with your friend Okran and Cameline. Cheers. Mm -hmm.